On this life flight, time is critical for a Ute crash victim fighting for his life. Oh, come on, come on. It's all right, mate. The one that came out the windscreen wasn't in a good way, so we just did everything we could to help. A mercy dash to a young mother fearing the worst. I couldn't really imagine myself being like, able to walk for the rest of my life. So. And fears are mounting for a capsized boat and its crew. Probably around here, so that's something suspicious. But are they too late? Yeah, there's a lot of sharks, huh? When emergencies strike, time, distance, and the men and women of life flight can be the difference between life and death. This is Life Flight. The Life Flight team are responding to a 111 call from a member of the public. Intensive care paramedic David Huntley is moments away from takeoff. Uh, so we're just getting ready to lift uh, into Nawi for a, a motor vehicle accident. Um, sounds like somebody may have been ejected from a motor vehicle, so we'll get the airborne now. Yes, good. Lifting off direct to the East 1500 or below, Cap 01. The mission is time critical. Pilot Harry Stevenson and crewman Dave Greenberg plot a direct course southeast of Wellington. We are responding and fly flying when you're ready. 23 year old Ricardo Giacon is being kept alive by a local doctor and fire officers, but his life is in immediate danger. Yep. Right. We'll land on the road where that fire is. Roger that. Yep, anywhere in here is good. Every second counts as the Westpac rescue chopper touches down. David takes in the crash scene and identifies the injured Ute occupant. Where do you think? Three. There was only three of you in the vehicle? Yeah, there's only three. Did he roll? Did he hit anything? They rolled. They came past us. So they're coming this way? This way, yep. They've hit down there. Yeah. They've skidded round. They've, they've corrected one way, corrected the other way. It's rolled once. Yeah. And he's come out the windscreen. OK, thanks. Witness Samantha was relaxing on her summer camping holiday when she saw the accident and acted immediately. We just sprinted as fast as we could here. We were first on the scene. We noticed the one that came out the windscreen wasn't in a good way, so we just did everything we could to help. Ricardo's mate, Jordan, climbed out of the ute's back window and helped Samantha perform CPR. The pair kept the seriously injured man alive until help arrived. Not sure how much longer we could have carried on with the way we were going for. He's quite unconscious and he's got what looks like quite a significant head injury. Bleeding in Ricardo's brain is compromising the apprentice builder's breathing. David and local doctor Andy Corsa are trying to keep oxygen flowing to Ricardo, but his head injury is causing him to resist. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's all right, mate. Get it. He's set to drop in. Ricardo's body is shutting down. It's hard for mate Jordan to see him in this critical state. Meanwhile, the life flight plane is going to the aid of another car crash victim who is at risk of being permanently paralysed. 30-year-old Casey Hughes lost control of her car at high speed. She crashed into a bank and is at risk of not walking again. The woman's vertebra has been crushed endangering her spinal cord, and the mission presents challenges for flight nurse Catherine McNamara. Your spinal cord um, sends the messages to your legs, and if, if you block that, you can't move your legs, falls paralysis. The team land at Palmerston North Airport and make quick time to the hospital. Small bump, and the back wheel's going over the same bump. Catherine and crewman Phil Harris have enclosed mother of three Casey in a full body vacuum mattress to keep her spine rigid. 
Casey held on for dear life as her car rolled several times. But when it came to rest, her life had changed forever. I realised I had my fair land on my legs. And I've seen that window screen smash, so I've tried to smash that to get out. Because the car was going to smoke. And I just dragged myself out. Somehow, I dragged myself out. No feeling. My legs had got away from the car. My feet was away. So I was just trying to crawl. Yeah, it was pretty scary. CT scans have revealed shocking damage to a vertebra in her spine. This blood boost. I'm just broke up, but it was actually like this boost. Pieces of the bone have come back in. I'm pushing on the spinal cord, so I just want to get rid of those little pieces that are stuck in there. Casey had only just started working again after being a stay-at-home mum for the last seven years, but now faces a future in a wheelchair. I couldn't really imagine myself being able to walk for the rest of my life, so... Back at the ute crash in Nawi, Ricardo isn't absorbing oxygen. David is attempting to get control of his airway, but the 23-year-old is resisting treatment because of a head injury. So I am going to prepare the um, RSI, so to, um, place a tube um, to maintain that airway because he's, he's quite restless and he's vomiting a lot. Ricardo had been on a pig hunting expedition and left the bush to get fish and chips with his mates when witness Samantha saw the horrific crash. Oh, pretty shocked, I guess. It's not looking awesome. We've got the best people looking after him, so I guess we're just hopeful, trying to think good things for him, I guess. So it doesn't look very nice, though. Hey, Ricardo, you've been in an accident. We're, we're helping you here, mate. Just, just take deep breaths, and we're going to give you some medicine here in a sec. Okay. Paramedics John Wells and Christine Gorry arrive to assist, but the violent movements are causing concerns. Ricardo may damage his spine. Put it on now because he's moving around too much. I don't know what he's done to his neck. Airway's my main concern, guys. Get him in 105 milligram, 10.5 mils. Yeah, but he's That's not. Ricardo's breathing worsens. The strange horse-like noises are a sign Ricardo's head injury is affecting his ability to breathe. Okay. That's the blood from the base of the brain. Mm. Mm. That's coming from his ear. Mm. Mm. David needs to insert a tube down Ricardo's throat to get control of his breathing using a procedure called rapid sequence induction, but it requires intense concentration. The drugs will temporarily stop Ricardo from breathing and resisting treatment. David has only moments to act. Fifty kilometres southeast of Wellington, outside the coastal town of Ngawi, the Life Flight team are working feverishly to save the life of Ricardo after the ute he was in rolled at high speed. The other occupants have minor injuries, but 23-year-old Ricardo wasn't wearing a seatbelt and was flung through the windscreen. 183, 108 on the blood pressure. Is that the pressure really? Intensive care paramedic David is attempting to gain control of Ricardo's airway by feeding a breathing tube into his mouth and lungs. Yep, saturate 100, heart rate's 95. Well done, Dave. 186, 109. Life Flight helped save Ricardo's life when they airlifted him to hospital as a baby after he swallowed a bottle of pills. Now his life is in even more danger. So we've sedated, paralysed him and now intubated him, so we've done an RSI procedure. Secured his airway due to a lot of vomiting and blood. Right, one, two, three, left. Watch that section in it. There's nothing more the team can do for Ricardo on scene. They have to get going as quickly as possible. Yeah, okay, we're locked. Yeah, we've got plenty of gas cages around the green. Warning lights are all out. Roger, thank you. Transporting one status one to Wellington. 
The 15-minute journey by air is the fastest way to get Ricardo the attention he needs, but his condition continues to decline. We've got an alarm. Uh, heart rate's up to 141. Yeah, I've just given him some more paralytics, and it, hopefully it'll start, it'll settle it down. I think it just increase the sedation a wee bit. Yeah, we're on landing the hospital. Alrighty guys, cleared out. Good job, Dave. The life flight team have brought Ricardo safely to hospital, but urgent action is required to relieve the pressure on his brain and try and save his life. The fixed wing crew have arrived at Palmerston North Airport with Casey, who needs specialist surgery after the mother of three shattered a vertebra in a high-speed car crash. Very lucky to survive it. Bone splinters are pressing on her vulnerable spinal cord and excessive movement could cause irreparable damage. But the weather's closing in and Catherine is concerned turbulence could affect the flight. I'm just going to be sitting here, so just wave at me, OK? Good morning, it's Phil here from Life Flight. We're just departing Palmerston North to come to Christchurch with Casey Hughes. Pilots Dion McMillan and Richard Fraser are doing everything they can to minimise the turbulence. That's all right. Clear up. It was a little bit rough today. The team's ultimate insurance is a vacuum mattress, a special membrane filled with tiny polystyrene balls that form a hard shell around Casey's body when the air is removed. People get the idea of a beanbag just being one that you laze in and sit in the living room and watch television. Uh, but because that's got air in it, but in this case, it's a type of material that we can actually suck out all the air. The pilots need to keep to a low altitude because Casey's spinal condition threatens her ability to breathe, but thick cloud is causing worrying turbulence. Catherine? Yeah? I would like to know if we can climb, bring the cabin up to another thousand, up to four thousand. We're just sitting in the turbulence. That would just get us above it. Yeah, we can move her up and I'll just put on a little bit of oxygen. Yeah, the saturation's down a little bit. In Wellington Hospital Emergency Department, David is handing over vital information. Doctors need to assess Builder Ricardo's life-threatening injuries. I was ejected from a motor vehicle at high speed out the front window. Um, no seatbelt worn. I want to advise everyone to get rid of Obvious head injury. We're going to go on the count of three. One, two, three. Cool. Ricardo's parents are making their way to hospital while consultant Vicky Vertingen creates a plan to save Ricardo's life. So it rolled twice. He was the passenger, which is all crushed on that side. And so there's the, the other chap was uh, that three, he walking and talking. The 23 year old has received multiple traffic fines in the past for failing to wear a seat belt. Dad Dino and Mum Helen spent years trying to get him to belt up. It's an audio, you idiot. It's called up with you, isn't it? But you're going to be all right, boy. Look out for your dogs. For now, there's little the young man's parents can do, and doctors still need to discover the full extent of his injuries. Get back down. One, two, three. A CT scan confirms internal bleeding is causing pressure inside Ricardo's brain. Straight to theatre, eh? I think we should go straight to theatre. Meanwhile, a ferry crew have spotted an upturned boat hull in Cook Strait, and intensive care paramedic Hannah Latter is preparing for a rescue at sea. There's been a report of a, um, some sort of uh, vessel that's overturned, so I'm unsure what sort of vessel, whether it's a, a small boat or a yacht or not too sure so just getting ready to get in the water. Crewman Dave Greenberg and pilot Dean Herrick have the GPS coordinates but in the treacherous strait finding the boat will be a challenge. We're airborne at this time, overturned boat in Cook Strait. The life flight team are searching for an overturned boat in Cook Strait and need to find it and the boat's crew fast. Sort of flying over the point. 
Uh, oh, it's anyway, it's somewhere around here, so that's something suspicious. Yeah, I got what you're looking at. Got something off to my right. Dean's got something off to the left. I'll keep mine inside as well. If the boat's crew are in the water, they could be at risk of hypothermia or drowning. Dead fish in the water? We've got a dead fish. A dead fish just off on the left, which all could indicate, you know, a boat that's sunk. Nice and still. Conditions are relatively calm for the search, but the strong currents of Cook Strait could have dragged the boat and its crew far from their reported position. The most sensible thing to do would be to make a run for shore from here. That's where they would be swimming. Although land is in sight, Cook Strait is notorious for its strong currents, making a swim for it challenging. Now there's an even greater concern. There's a lot of sharks, huh? In hospital, Ute crash victim Ricardo is out of surgery and in the intensive care unit. But the 23-year-old is slow to wake up and Dr Ryan Salter is concerned. Uh, he's still not completely following instructions. Um, so it's pretty clear that his brain's had a bit of a shake-up. Um, we just need to give him a bit of time to see, see how he goes. Mum Helen and Dad Dino have been at Ricardo's side, looking for signs that their only son is recovering from his injuries. Squeeze my finger, mate. Squeeze. Come on. Give a squeeze, Ricardo. Still not land. Chasing a big pig. I got the worst phone call in my life. Oh, he just sick to the stomach. Really? Yeah, but this is what happens when you don't wear a seatbelt. Isn't it? Ricardo is a mile-a-minute outdoors man whose life is filled with big risks. But this one might come back to haunt the family. Oh, look at the poor bugger. Then what takes two seconds? Put it on. The Life Flight Fixed Wing Team are attempting to touch down as smoothly as possible at Christchurch Airport to prevent further damage to Casey's shattered vertebra. Very clear to land, mate, that's her one. Not smart control, taxi. Feeling okay in the bag? Yeah, feeling it's nice and tight. Nice and tight there. Life Flight has taken every precaution they can getting her this far. But Casey is approaching the future with eyes wide open. Casey arrives at the Christchurch spinal unit where surgeons will attempt to reconstruct her vertebra, but it will be months before the mother of three discovers if she will walk again. The Life Flight team are searching for missing crew after reports of an overturned boat in Cook Strait, but there's no sign of either, and sharks have been spotted nearby. There's a lot of sharks, huh? Lady list four, lady list four, straightsman, straightsman. If we've got an upside down floating light green object about three, four cables ahead of us. A sighting from the ferry crew is the team's best lead yet. Oh, yep. I think I've got it. Okay. Hey, Fram, we've got it in sight. Uh, we're looking for debris or any persons in the water, over. Unable to see it. Roger, the Spirit of Wellington is en route, making best speed. And we'll get the Spirit of Wellington to establish anything that might tell us that it's a, a recent capsize, over. And Spirit of Wellington is just approaching the boat now, Lady Liz. The Coast Guard check the boat for a body that could be trapped underneath, but there's no sign of life. Uh, it's been here for a while, look at that. Here, one, um, the boat's been found, no one on board, um, we're returning to base. Four days after surgery, Ricardo has woken but is still struggling to make sense of his surroundings. Mate Jordan is happy just to see him alive. Hang in there, bro. Can you move today, eh? Yeah, no, he's improved a lot since, since the crash. Yeah, he's doing good. Jordan climbed out the back window and found his mate lying on the road. 
And at that point, you know, I thought, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's past, he's, yeah. This was the freakiest time in my life, I, I have to say. It's just, it replays in my head. It's just, it's, yeah. Ricardo continues to improve and is transferred to a ward two weeks later. He is awake, but his brain injury is significant. Hey, G. The family are doing their best to cope, and for younger sister Gabriella, the changes are dramatic. I heard a car crash. Hey? I heard a car crash. Yeah. He doesn't really know where he is, what he's doing. He thinks he's off hunting. It's hard when he asks, you know, can we go home? <laughs> Definitely miss him. Three months later, Ricardo is finally home, and the experience has made him all too aware of how close he came to dying after not wearing a seatbelt. Yeah, I'll definitely be more careful with stuff I do now because of what happened. It can happen so quickly. Ricardo has lost full sight in his right eye, but he hasn't let that affect him. The passionate pig hunter has been back out on the trail and also returned to work as a builder. I just like the thing the men and women from Life Fight, because they pretty much saved me and gave me another chance. So yeah, thanks a lot. If they didn't come, I don't know what would have happened. It probably wouldn't have turned out as good as it did. Casey had surgery to clean out shards of bone and insert two rods to stabilise the vertebra. Months later, she is moving around on crutches and there's hope she will make a full recovery. The overturned boat was taken to shore and no missing person reports were linked to its disappearance. <laughs>